Engine's going into that. But before we shove the engine up in the hole, we do some prep work. There's an extra radiator with the cooling, with the air conditioning radiator going at the front there. There's actually some air conditioning lines already in it. There's some wiring for me to do. And there's a fuel pump to put in the fuel tank all before we put that engine in. This van's gonna need a bit of panel bedding at the back. Once we've completed our jobs, we're gonna put an LSD in it, fix things like crimped off brake lines. The engine and gearbox are already prepped for this job. And then we work through, we've cleaned the engine bay, wiring changes to do, all before we put the engine in. So often I see guys just shove the motor in the hole and they find that then there's all this other stuff that's much harder to do with the engine in the way. I wonder if it was going very well with the diesel in it. That's pretty disgusting. As with many conversions, there's other jobs that need to be done. Like defeats, different axles, big brakes, skyline calipers, KZH100 rotors. This is just a second hand setup that came off another van, and then it had custom brake hoses made to suit the job. So they've been test fitted up to check before they get rebuilt. Of course, we, we did both the left and the right. Just putting that out there. And that's just a 4-1 diff head to a 4-1 LSD. We fitted the front brakes and, and then we took them off. And here you'll see we've got some wiring coming down. You want to sort that before you uh, put the engine in, because otherwise it's a pain in the backside because there's an engine in the way. Down here we have the EFI fuel tank. So exactly the same as the diesel one, but it's got the bigger hole for a EFI pump. So that makes it much, much easier to work with. And we have a radiator with a fan mounted, ready to go into the hole. Well, we've actually already test fitted it, but we're sorting wiring out. Now has the diff in. Oh, look at that. See in there? That is the brake pipe on this van. So at some point, it's all struggled to get brakes on one side because there's a bit of crack in the brake hose. And this is why we do the wiring before we put the engine in the hole. Because you've got access much better. Jasmine is quite confidently just popping the extra wires out. That ran around the alternator loop. She's going to pull them back into the battery box. Got a bit of part there as you can see. So all the extra wires that are running down this side are going to come out as well. All this stuff. She's been learning off me, so she's getting pretty good now. We have a little box on the floor, ready to be inserted. Normally it's little boxes are getting inserted in, into. Uh, there is a fan and a radiator. Wiring round to the alternator has been done. And it's heat proofed. Good to go, looking Looking lovely. Uh, wiring back into the door switches. We've just made a little change here. There's a vacuum hose right into the back. See there for the brake booster. So we've planned that. Some power steer lines sitting in place. 
an air conditioning hose sitting in the proximate place. Heater hose is up in here. I'm probably going to just conduit up in this bit of wiring instead of using the factory plastic. I haven't cut these off yet, I'm thinking about it. And fuel lines run up into the back corner. I think it's ready to have an engine put in. Now if we actually have a look here at the chassis rails between here and here, it's about 20 millimeters narrower than the engine. So there's a big engine to go in a little hole. Now this is going to be interesting. Uh, we need before we go down we're actually going to turn the engine sideways so it will fit through the hole we actually have to rotate it on the engine stand sideways yeah uh, down you go And whoop! Now we're starting to look like we're in the hole. Check it out. Right. Just bring it down a little bit, please. Is the front pulley clear yet? We're actually over the front cross member now, aren't we? Yep. Work it, look at that. So it hopefully we'll sit around about there. Is, are we clear of the fan? Yep. Everything's clear, eh? Yeah. I think that's pretty good. Awesome, thank you. It's sitting a little bit high at the back. This engine stand's taken a hiding and it's actually all twisted down at the front. It's the bum sitting up at the moment. But that looks pretty good, eh? So we support it in here, put the, we'll put the bar across it so it sits in here, might have to put two supports across it and then we'll slam the gearbox up behind it, put the clutch on it and slam the gearbox into it. There's actually reasonable room at the front of these, so that big, big ass Maradine fan is looking good in there, that looks really good, perfect. You yeah, we'll drop the, the lifter off. I think it goes forward a little bit more yet. Bar, bar has to <laughs> we have to turn it sideways. Is that too high? Oh, it's too long. Oh no, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. Right. My neck part, shorter bar. Shorter bar, yeah. Right. I reckon that's gonna fit. Sitting over to the right a little bit, but I reckon that's going to fit. All right, let's get a clutch on this thing and get a gearbox up behind it. And then we've got to sit all the accessories on, the alternators and the power steer pumps and stuff. The gearbox has already been prepared for this job and it's running my own style internal release bearing which 
this unit will adjust across the life of the clutch. So it fits in really easy. And it's designed to work with my flywheel clutch package. I don't have to run any spaces in behind. You see it's pretty close to the block there. That's the perfect spacing for the setup. 10 kilos, 10 kilos of flywheel, pressure plate, and the release bearing ready to go into the gearbox. So let's get this pushed up and into place. Oh, and this is the big box. So this is an R350. Sometimes you do need a big box to take the power of the UZ. And it's the best way to make sure these high aces are reliable. The van is progressing, as you'll see. So that is a R32 Skyline caliper on a KZH100 rotor. We're working under here. Got an aircon pump on there. One of the lines just bolts straight in. Of course, it came out of a van already. We have an alternator in there and a past air pump in there. And we're working on some fuel lines and trying to fit a fuel footer nicely. And then we thought, let's turn it to a returnless system. So that's going to be less lines going to the front. Just dead hit it, fuel footer at the back, bolt it up nice and high. Really simple, really easy. Makes our life good. We've measured up for the drive shaft, so that's going off to get done. And things are progressing well. So we thought we would sort the diff out, put an LSD in it. Of course, we're, we're doing the engine swap, eh? Yeah, but we're working back here beforehand. And then we're mixing and max, matching axles because this van was a six stud. <clears throat> it was a six stud. And the front brakes are now five stud. And we want the back to be the same. But it turns out that on the six studs, they changed the housings. Oh. This is one of the fun jobs and fun parts. You're always learning. And we found out that Toyota changed the housing flange pattern to accommodate different axles. The diff head came out of a Hilux. So those axles are 30 millimeters shorter than the high ace ones but I had a set of high ace ones so I've got all the bits to do the job and I happen to have a spare housing as part of that the u-bolts had been left long hit something and bent over so they've all got to come off and they're all corroded and yuck just part of the job in the fuel tank tank department we were Going to put a fuel pump into the tank. Nice and simple, easy job. There's the, there's the diesel pickup. That's disgusting. However, I've managed to find an injected petrol tank for this job. So it's easier if you can to just buy the parts for it. Sure, it's great modifying, but a stock standard high ace EFI tank out of the later model, like 2002, 2001 to 2003, 4, before they change shapes, is way easier to just put it in the hole. The tank fits better, less chances of leaks, or the, the, the pump fits in nicer, it's got a proper cradle, less chances of leaks, so lots of good things there. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab that tank. As we move forward, of course, we're working up to actually fitting the engine. Before we fit the engine, there's some other things we're gonna do as well. Radiator fans, change some wiring in the engine bay. And I see this, that I do this for a living, and I prep the job, prepare, planning, 
I see so many guys so keen to get the engine in the hole, and then they take a lot longer to do the job because there's an engine in the hole and other things haven't been prepared. Part of it comes down to experience, but on the same token, if you've got an engine mounted, it's often easier than to write a list of all the things you need to do to prep the engine bay, pop the engine out again, do your prep work and put the engine back in. And in most cases, it's going to be faster than trying to do those jobs with that lump in, the, in, the, in your way. So just keep that in mind when you're doing these sorts of jobs. So what has been happening on the van? We haven't done an update for a few days. And, and we, I mean, I have a man who's come to help me for a little bit. He's worked for me twice before. And I basically, I pointed to the van and I said, do stuff, and he did. So he's just getting in. He's worked with me plenty of times, done plenty of conversions. So he just got stuck in and hammered out this van. I think we've, we've already talked about the brakes. And I probably should do a big video on that. He's camera shy. Oh, he's camera shy. We'll, we'll catch him soon. He, he's been in here. Actually, I think he might have just crop dusted past here to tell you the truth. You bastard. Yeah. Um, radiator hoses are done. He's been working on some uh, air conditioning lines. In there, there's actually a helper pump. Um, we'll have a look at that help, other pump. So it had this pump in it, little little helper pump, but I don't think it was working so well originally. Well, it did originally, but after many years of use, it had failed. So we popped another one in it. Up in this department, there's some hoses going on. This one, uh, I think there was a, oh yeah, there was a rub mark in it. So we're organizing another one. I had some parts go to the vapor blaster. And so um, that's the front crossover that might be going on this one. As you can see that you can see up in there the, the dash clusters out. Under here, there's been an air conditioning pump been popped in the hole and as I said we've been working on the lines I did a little video on air conditioning pumps there's an alternator and a power steering and he's actually got in and done a power steer line oh, I don't think we're gonna see up in there but there's also at the front we put in power steer coolers so there's a whole lot of hoses run in for that as well it's quite a bit of time just to make that all fit One of our big holdups has been the gear linkages. Um, this is the big box. This is a R350, and the linkages are different to the L series vans, the, the 2.4 diesel and the 2.4 petrol and the 2.8 uh, diesel, all different. So, can, oh, all different to the the big box, which is from a 1KZ. We've got some linkages. And we got the correct rods. You can see there's a bit more of a kick here, which is how they changed. The, 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 the gears are a bit different, the way that the gearbox operates. Uh, we also did a little bit of work on the fuel system. You'll notice there's only uh, one fuel line now. Um, fuel systems and fuel lines and return lines and fitting fuel filters and I just jokingly said we'll just make it returnless put a fuel filter with the regulator in it at the back put it over there it'll be easy and uh, Jason liked that idea so it now has a returnless style or, or a deadhead style fuel filter fitted to it so the filters got the return straight back to the tank and the engine's going to get the fuel pressure regulator blanked off. In the fuel pump department, we fitted the normal Nippon Denso high flow pump that we use. That's gone into the tank. The van's actually got some damage up and behind the bumper. It, it's had a smack. It's moved it in about an inch, 25 mils. So that's going to have to go to the panel beaters to be sorted 
before we put this tank in. The old tank was bent to shape, so that would fit in and out, but the new tank is out of a petrol high ace, and it, it simply won't fit. So we're gonna mount that in the, in the back of the vehicle at some point, run the fuel lines down so we can start it, run it, can drive to the panel beaters to be fixed. There's, this, there's actually a couple of other bits and pieces to be fixed up where it's been stacked on the sills incorrectly in the past, and the door hinges on one side are a bit ugly, so we'll get those fixed too and, and make this van a really nice van. Uh, remote oil filter. Now, I'm not a fan. I don't like remote oil filters that much, mainly because people get them wrong. But we've sat down and um, had some lines made. So we've mounted a remote oil filter up here, up under there, and the lines run round underneath the air conditioning pump. If it didn't have air conditioning, we would be doing it differently, just put a little filter block on. But with aircon, we run the lines through and put a remote oil filter. Oh, there's that helper pump. Oh, there's the helper pump too. Oh, there it is. There's a big helper pump mounted up under here in front of the radiator. Um, so there's a, this one's got the double radiator. It's got one here sitting flat and a second one sitting vertical. And we find the helper pump helps funny enough being a helper pump it helps the flow through the front radiator and, and reduces that temperature so our next mission is to mount up the linkages we're actually going to pull the box out drill some holes in here drill and tap some holes in here to build just a, a plate to put the linkages onto and oh, we've been working on intakes so that's another one yeah it's dark but look at this, we have linkages. Oh, you can't actually see them, eh? Oh. There's some gear linkages right there. The gearbox came out, I turned around, Jace dropped it out, tapped some holes and built a little bracket and put it back in. So that was pretty simple. And, and then we started working on exhaust. Another good day's progress. And I think He's got some O-rings and some aircon stuff back in and fitted up the, the past air pipe that came back. So that's looking pretty good. It's a bit dark. I'll give you a bit more once we've got some light and it's daytime. Job. As with any job like this, there's lots of little bits and pieces that are being done. The other big one we did last week is started up on sorting the intake. So I've got a man here today, we're gonna to have a bit more work and try and get that tacked together and then it can be welded up fully. So that's gonna be my job right now. We have a drive shaft. Jason thought he might mount a drive shaft hoop to it. I think it's perfect. Except I don't think zip ties are quite up to the job. <laughs> he is pretty happy with himself actually. Yep. And hopefully we've got things like uh, clutch line. Hopefully you pick them up, and look, we've got linkages. And they're kind of, we've got gear changes, they are working. And now we're gonna try and fit some headers up in there too, which is gonna be an interesting challenge. I'm pulling it apart now. You're, you're kind of a bit late on the uptake. Yeah, but it looks lovely, look at that. It's actually gonna work. <laughs> we've now got some uh, modified linkages. Slightly modified rod, and the headers are going to fit. Look at that. We were going to use a set that had been cut before, but I have these ones made up that aren't welded. So we can just tweak them accordingly. So that's going to work just fine. And then a slight uh, modification of the linkages so they clear, and in they go. Well done. And I think we have a drive shaft hoop. If we need to lift the van, we can just lift it off the drive shaft hoop. A new chassis, little member through here, little cross member, chassis to chassis, drive shaft hoop hanging off for, for legal reasons over here. And the drive shaft's been balanced and had a new tube put in it, so that's all good to go. Progress has been happening again. It's been another real busy week. We have a set of headers sitting in there. So on this side, we used our stock standard set, we're all welded up. 
And then we put this little extension just to make it easier to get into them. And you'll also see there's a set of engine mounts. We've upgraded from our normal mounts to our race mount series. And they're tacked up, uh, ready to do the intake. And then these will come out and be fully welded. With the exhaust on this side, the stock standard set actually fitted in okay. But it was, it was close in here to the where we've mounted the linkages. And I want to make it easy to service. The goal was to be able to get the gearbox out without taking exhaust off. So we used our unwelded set. So these are yet to be welded up in here. And we just repositioned the cone. And then we put the extension on so it's easy to get to down here. So they've got to come off yet and be re-welded or fully welded. And then the race mounts will come out as well and be welded. As part of fitting the exhaust on, we did have to modify this linkage here. So there's where it was and there where it is now. And I'll be ordering new bushes for all of here. We'll be replacing with those bushes. Aircon line was been done, come back and been sorted. Power steering has been sorted. So this bit here is ready for its uh, one more one more time out and then it will be locked into place and sealed all up. I think we talked about the gear drive shaft hoop. It's all fully welded now. You could pretty much lift the vehicle off that. But that was the, the main stuff we've done. Look at this day. It is a gorgeous day right here today. Look at that. Beautiful. I had some bits come back from uh, for the van. I've got an engineer who lives very close to me. And he's a bit like me in, in my business. Uh, works from the family farm in a shed. Does awesome work. And uh, I get him to just weld stuff up. And whilst my welding is perfectly fine for legality here in New Zealand, it's not to the standard that he does it to. He grabs the TIG, does the engine mounts, and they come up beautiful. So we've got the intake back, uh, both the exhaust manifolds with their, with their little extension, and the engine mounts ready to be painted, and getting ready for that final fitment, final assembly. I also ordered all the bushes for the gear linkages, so they're coming. So it's almost ready for the actual final putting it together, bolting it all up. Fingers crossed the jigsaw that we've made is all right. Of course a lot is together, but we go over it and we start just ticking stuff off. Marking it, saying yep, everything's tight, oil lines are tight, diff bolts are tight, front radiated bolt, bolts are tight, hose clamps are tight, all that's done getting it ready to need exhaust and wiring is, is my goal. And, and that that way we've got most of the stuff crossed off the list and it's just those couple of components left. We've even started into some of the wiring like the fan wiring and stuff. Fuel pump wiring will be run in. That's in this case is sort of they all get blended together each job and they each rely on other jobs to be finished. So it is quite a tricky situation, but we get there and, and Hey, it's, it's great to be getting to this point. I think I'm going to enjoy this day a little bit more. I'll, I'll watch the paint dry. And then I'll assemble up all these parts we need and start uh, bolting stuff back together and checking. How many uggaduggers to do that up tight? That many. Too many, apparently. Trying to do a video, and there's a noisy bugger in the background with his uh, ugga-dugga gun tightening stuff up and spanner-checking his... Ah. Yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> He's been getting his big gorilla hands and squeezing them into little spaces to fit up the exhaust manifolds. New bolts. Engine mounts are painted. New rubbers pushed in, spiral wrap 
around the oil cooler lines. Gear linkages have had a whole lot of new bushes and pins put in to try and make them a bit firmer and nicer. There's one rubber one up in, in there that's not very pleasant to do and is frequently fails. In this department, uh, it's been putting the radiator hoses in and it's pretty much, it's going back together. This, this is hopefully the final assembly. The reality is it's a conversion and there will be uh, little niggles. Things we'll put on the list are things like these bump stops, which is why often um, are often missed when doing conversions and then it goes to be made legal and it needs additional stuff done. So I'll list all them up. It's not going to go through with the, those components like that. Little stuff like uh, washers under bolts and spring washers where they should be. <clears throat> I think this is the first time it's had those uh, control arms put in. And somewhere we will find that missing bolt. It's in the workshop, definitely in the workshop. When we get to the top, we'll have a bit of a look up there as well as, as the progress is happening up there. And the goal is to have it so it's on its wheels this week, ready for wiring and exhaust and a fuel tank when the van gets straightened out. But I'm pretty happy with the progress. The other thing we're doing is, is putting brown slippery stuff into places like that. These things need brown slippery stuff too. This, this one gets LSD brown slippery stuff. Angle grinders are a normal tool when doing conversions. So my hairy technician here has been uh, doing stuff. As you can see, we've got an engine cover that sits on. And there's a bit of a gonzo tube in there. Down to a throttle body that sits yeah, down there. Are you happy now? Yeah. And it actually clears the seat. With the engine bolted in on our, our mounts, it's, it's not going to move. It's not going to be any wiggle, wiggle room there. It's nice and solid. And he's going, doing a bit of final assembly at the top here. Getting it so it's close to wiring. So hoses on. He's probably going to have to go get a belt for it. And he's, he's not really economically sized to do the clutch master cylinder. So I'll be doing that stuff. And we're popping it together. And it's looking pretty good in here, actually. Internal release bearing is hosed up. It's had new hoses made. So we have wheels on it. It's going to be touching the ground again for the first time in a little while. Uh, the different wheels on the back. We couldn't fit standard wheels on the front because there's big brakes. Mm, it's going to need taillights, too. Hmm. Right. Inside, hydraulic clutch is all bled up, ready to go. We put some heater hoses in and tuck them in. We get to put the, the intake in. It's going to be nicknamed the Gonzo tube, and there's the, the air filter to go in. Pipes to go in and a bit of beading to go around there. Little little things, bits and pieces, just to make it really nice. Putting the clutch master cylinder in was, was high on my list of really fun things to do. Not. And of course, little stuff like just putting the dipstick in and getting it ready. Got the box of nuts and bolts. Throttle body to fit. At this point, it's pretty much ready for wiring. That's the next step. We've gone as far as it's practical with this part of it until some wires go. So that's for another day. We're going to call this quits for the moment. 
and uh, we'll come back to you when we do some wiring on it.